if you enter the Catholic chapel, you're going to see something you don't see. Like the thing is there, but it is so obvious that you take it for granted. And what is missing, you don't realize what is missing. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but let us go to the chapel. Okay, so this is how the inside of a regular Catholic church looks like. Look around. Do you get what I'm referring to? Let's get back to the studio. Hello and welcome to the second Archangel. I don't know if you saw what I wanted you to see, but you realize that there are no chairs. I mean, aside the ones on the sanctuary, we don't have individual chairs. In a Catholic chapel, a typical Catholic chapel, we have pews, long wooden pews. And yes, I know pews seem like the most irrelevant thing to do a whole video about. But this is the Catholic Church. Nothing is irrelevant. Everything has meaning. So pews, what about them? Let's go back in history. In the early church, there was actually no need to sit for the liturgy. One of the reasons was because the liturgy was usually held in people's houses. I mean, how many chairs can you find in people's houses? So the chairs provided were for those who were elderly and weak. Aside that, they were in a hurry. I mean, these guys are being persecuted. This is not a time to sit and be drinking. No, no, we don't have that time. Aside that, the nature of the liturgy itself didn't really give room for sitting because they had two tables, the altar and the lectern or the pulpit. So they moved to the pulpit, which is in the middle, and they listened to the word of God from there, after which they moved to the altar and then they partake in the sacrifice. There was so much movement. There was no room for sitting. But thanks to the Reformation, we began sitting down, we began having pews. Why? Because there was an emphasis or a renewed emphasis on the word of God, on preaching. Which means that now we would have to preach, the priest has to preach and explain the scriptures to the people for a longer period of time. Which means that we actually have to sit and listen. So the whole idea of pews is not originally a Catholic idea. It is more a Protestant idea. Back to the matter. The whole pew issue began when some people started bringing their pews to church. I mean, they left it in the church and it was theirs. So you can't sit on my family pew. It got even worse when there were pew boxes and people locked it such that it's not yours. You can't sit. Even if they're absent, you can't sit there. Along the line, as the years progressed, the churches started getting pews and renting the sitting positions. Stratification. So those who can pay more have a particular place they sit and more comfortable pew, kind of. And those who can pay less have the normal ones. And those who can't pay at all are actually going to be standing. The Council of Baltimore made this renting of pews a thing, said that it was a way of getting money for the church. So we rented pews. You have enough money, you sit in a prestigious position in the assembly. But as the year wore on, we come to realize that no, we are all one people, one body of Christ. And so there was no stratification. Just sit wherever you want to sit in the pew. And that is how pews have gotten so normalized in our churches, in the Catholic church, and in some Protestant churches. So if the pews are out of historical facts, why don't you use chairs now? I mean, these individual chairs are more comfortable, aren't they? Well, that is where we come to the three most significant features of the pew. Firstly, it is wooden. Secondly, it is long. And thirdly, it is quite uncomfortable. Wood is simple, it is common. And the simplicity of wood communicates to us the simplicity of life that we are supposed to live. And um, the simplicity of wood is a sign of our humility. The fact that we are nothing and we are coming before God, who is everything, and in hopes that we will live as glorified people through the grace of God. Number two, the pews are long. If the pews are long, it means they can accommodate more people. If they can accommodate more people, it means they can accommodate different people. And as such, it shows community, you know, communal living, such that the lawyer, the doctor, the taxi driver, the market woman are all sitting in the pew. And in the Catholic Church, aside the ministers, because of the roles they perform, everyone else sits in the pew. The church president, to the church gatesman, everybody is sitting in the pew. So it is commonality, community, the fact that we all, different as we are, make up one body of Christ. Number three, the pew is quite uncomfortable. And why is this? It's not because the church doesn't want you to be comfortable in your father's house, but the church wants you to be attentive. 
and conscious of what is going on. You and I know that when we are so comfortable, we just drift off. Some of us sleep, some of us just have time to fantasize. But when we are upright, when we are upright and uh, we are not too comfortable, we, we tend to focus. Unfortunately, some of us have the gift of still dozing off or sleeping in the uncomfortable pew. So if you're a Catholic and you enter the chapel and you see the pew, please notice it because they speak to you. They speak to you about community, about humility, and about attentiveness in church. If you're a non-Catholic or a non-Protestant, yeah, and you enter any of the chapels and you see pews, don't feel so weird. Come on, just sit down because these are the things that the pews signify. And when you are able to inculcate that, you realize that you are going to have a full acknowledgement of what is going on in the chapel. Thank you for watching to the end. If you have been educated, like, subscribe, and share for others to know. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Peace.